Thanks for joining us today. I hope these words have been a blessing to you and they will continue to strengthen you. Today we look at a very important text, Psalm 78, which is an account of the wilderness experience of the people of Israel. And I want to focus on what the psalmist calls the food of their fancy. What is it all about? We often think that when uh, God answers prayer and gives us what we want, that it is a sign of the favor of God. Well, is it? Very often it is if our prayer is consistent with the will of God. But the Exodus account is very interesting because it shows us also the fact that Sometimes God will give us what we want, what we keep on demanding from him, even though it is not his perfect will. Or he will give us what we want, even though our attitude and our demeanor is not correct. So in Psalm 78 verses 17, Onwards, it says, But they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. And they tested God in their heart by asking for the food of their fancy. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? The food of their fancy is manna. When they were grumbling in the wilderness, and the story is found very uh, graphically in Exodus chapter 16, when they were, they were grumbling against God, they were grumbling against Moses, uh, God said, I will rain bread from heaven for them. And so they found these white round substance on the ground in the morning. And the Israelites went and said, what is this? Man who? That's what we have uh, translated as manna. Manna means the bread of heaven that God gave in response to their demanding it from him. But more than that, the story tells us how the people of Israel behaved in a most deplorable fashion after having seen the hand of God upon their lives in such a miraculous way. God provided for them. He protected them. He led them. He called them to be his covenant people. But when there were testings and trials in the wilderness, they began to complain and grumble against God. I only learned rather late in my Christian life that God really detests grumbling for some reason. He does not want us to murmur against him. On the contrary, he wants us to be thankful and grateful for where, where we are. And the people of Israel in the wilderness are a perfect example of uh, grumbling, which is detestable before God. And this is what happened, actually. They began to grumble because they didn't have their needs met in exactly the way they wanted. And in the process of their grumbling, they changed the narrative, the real story of what God had done for them. In Exodus 16, we read that they said, we were full with plenty of bread in Egypt. This was their testimony about their life in Egypt. That was a total lie. They were slaves in Egypt. They were not full with bread. They didn't have all the food that they wanted. And then they challenged God and Moses and they said, you have brought us to kill us here in this wilderness. That was a very evil statement to make against God and against Moses. So they, they challenged the motivation of God and they changed the narrative. And they thought that they were fooling God. But actually, they had a terrible life in Egypt. And God delivered them. So they should have been grateful. And they kept on asking God 
for bread. They didn't really have to because when there was a need, he provided for them and they forgot all the good things God had done for them. And in response to their grumbling and demanding, God gave them manna. And it says later on in Psalm 78 that God was furious with them. Yet he provided manna for them. That changes the picture altogether because it tells me that first, God hates grumbling. Secondly, he shows me that I should be honest and truthful about my past. Thirdly, it shows me that Whatever my situation, my station in life, wherever I am, God knows about it. I'm incredibly important to him. There may be times when things don't go my way. There may be times when things don't work according to my timetable, but God is watching over me and I cannot use those times to throw accusations against people around me, against leaders, or against God, or about his wisdom, about how he leads me. And when I keep on asking and demanding something, he will give it. And actually, that provision that he has made when I have been so wrong in my attitude against him, actually is a reflection of how furious he is. Do you think God gets angry? Of course he does. God is a person. God wants us to be grateful. I know parents who make all provisions for their children. They pay their housing, sometimes university, education costs. They give them what they need. Even though those children are displeasing in their lifestyles and are even rebellious and complaining against their parents because that's the heart of a parent. And when you think about that, I mean, I personally know people and I have encountered people in my pastoral ministry, parents who have been providing for their children over there, although the behavior of the children was deplorable. Well, God provides for us. And when we demand, name it, claim it, and try to get it, things that feed our carnal desires, it may come our way, but it's just not what God wants us to have because he knows that that will feed our carnal desires. On the contrary, Jesus told us that we don't have to worry about our personal needs. But just like God wanted the people of Israel to have a steadfast heart towards him, we should ask him to help us to be steadfast in our faith, to praise him at all times, and that there is nothing comparable to the deliverance that the Lord gave us from our Egypt. I have experienced many good things in my life. God has provided and given even instances when I have experienced healings and so on. But none of those compare to my exodus from Egypt. None of those compare to the forgiveness of sins that the Lord has given me. And throughout our lives, whether we are 30, 40, 50, 60 years in the faith, we need to have that gratitude to him for our deliverance from our Egypt. And we need to learn how not to grumble when we go through wilderness experiences, knowing that we are important to him. He is watching over us. And we need to just submit to his word and be steadfast, knowing that where we are right now in our walk with God and in the circumstances that we face is according to his sovereign will. And no matter what the difficulties, the restrictions may be, 
God is watching. God is providing. God is protecting. All we have to do is to be grateful and humble and faithful to him. May God help us to honor him every day and have an attitude of gratitude rather than an attitude of grumbling. Let's pray. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we ask you for forgiveness sometimes for demanding the food of our fancy. Help us not to be deceived, but Lord, help us to focus on the things that are important to you in our lives and help us always to be grateful, faithful, and humble all along the way by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless those words to your heart and help you to walk with him in a way that pleases him. God bless you.